The remnants of Bikini Atoll's nuclear age still litter the archipelago. Dr. Evil's lair. <laughs> Looks very ominous, doesn't it? Legendary marine explorer Martin Daly is taking me to this stark concrete bunker. It's here that the Cold War nuclear arms race was set in train. Look how thick this door must have been. That's the outside of there, so that's my hand. That's three foot. It's about five foot thick, or you know, nearly a metre and a half. Wow. They weren't stuffing around, were they? So this was ground zero. Wow, careful. Imagine that countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. Kaboom. In 1946, the Americans started Operation Crossroads in the Marshall Islands. The curtain rises on the greatest military experiment ever undertaken, the atom bomb test at Bikini. Bikini Atoll was ground zero. For the next 12 years, they conducted 67 separate blasts, turning paradise into the most contaminated place on the planet. It was kind of obscene. Choose the most beautiful place in the world, then blow it up. Considering what they did to this place, does it amaze you that there's anything left? No, nature's pretty resilient. I can't get over how clear the water is. Keep your eye out, we might see some manta rays in the channel here. Australian Martin Daly now calls the Marshall Islands home. This tiny nation lies in the Pacific Ocean, roughly halfway between Australia and Hawaii. Bikini Atoll sits on the northern edge of the island chain. It's the military presence here and the US that have been the worst thing that's happened to here, and maybe the best thing. The waters around Bikini Atoll are like an aquarium. But it's these giants of the deep the sunken relics of the nuclear blasts that have made this place one of the most exotic and dangerous dive locations in the world. All these ships were fully fueled, fully provisioned. Mm. Uh, they had aeroplanes on the deck, aeroplanes in the hangar, knives and forks and plates. Nothing was taken off and it was sunk intact just to see what would happen. It's an expensive experiment. The USS Saratoga was one of the most famous aircraft carriers in history. But by the end of World War II, she had reached her use-by date. So Sarah, as she was affectionately known, and the other ships, including the Nagato, the flagship of the defeated Japanese Navy, were assembled in Bikini Lagoon and Newt. It took two blasts to sink the Saratoga. Difficult now to watch was the death of old Sarah. Is there anything to be concerned about down there? Yes, the wreck is getting old mm. and it's getting unstable. In particular, when there's a bit of a swell running, you'll feel it flex mm. and it's collapsing. So no unexploded bombs? Oh, there's all sorts of unexploded oh. ordnance down there, yeah. You know, they were trying to simulate an actual attack, a nuclear attack, and they were, so they wanted to see exactly what happened. Martin Daly once worked as a salvage diver. Now he runs the only dive operation in Bikini. And the Saratoga is the star attraction, one of 10 ships the Americans left in the lagoon. The first thing you, you sense is I mean, when it comes out of the gloom and you jump in the water and you dive down and you usually land on the, on the flight deck, the first thing is how big it is. It just goes forever. I mean, I don't think it's possible to dive from one end of the boat and back again in one dive. It's just huge. 270 metres long, nearly 40,000 tonnes in weight. The signs of Saratoga's past are everywhere. Guns long silent, yet pointing to the sky. The bombs that litter her deck are still very much live and potentially explosive. 
But this isn't a war grave, and what makes the diving unique is all the relics to be found, like this bugle. And that's before you even enter the ship. The bridge where she was steered through some of the most famous battles of World War II, like Guadalcanal and Iwo Jima. As you dive deeper, it gets darker and more eerie. 40 metres down, inside the officer's mess, time has stood still. The captain's table fully laden with crockery, even a teapot. Part of Martin's brief is to protect these wrecks, so you can touch, but never take. To think that that was all bright and shiny and brand new at one time, and it's just been sitting there decaying over all these years. Mm. It's kind of surreal how it's all still sitting there. You didn't want to disturb anything. I hope there's no ghosts in there. <laughs> <laughs> you just imagine the ghost in Saratoga. <laughs> The ships aren't the only ghosts of Bikini. This was the ancestral home of the Bikinians. The islanders lived an idyllic life before the Americans came and asked them to leave, so they could use their lagoon for nuclear testing. The United States government now wants to turn this great destructive power into something for the benefit of mankind. The Bikinians were told they could return when it was all over. So they took the Americans at their word and sailed away. When they say we'll bring you back, they probably thought it was a couple of weeks. Right. They didn't really know how long. They didn't think nearly 70 years on that they'd still be homeless. No, otherwise I don't think they would have left. Alison Kellen, is one of 5,000 Bikini exiles who are now scattered across the Marshall Islands. Many now live in urban squalor, a world away from the utopia they have lost. Do you want to go back to Bikini one day? Yes, I do. I do. Realistically, do you think that's going to happen? No. Not even 0.000%. How do you feel about that? Very sad. I feel like we were robbed. Walking along Bikini Atoll, it feels like you're in paradise. Crystal clear water, white sand and coconut trees as far as the eye can see. But there's a catch. You can't eat the coconuts. In fact, you can't eat anything that's grown here. And that's because during the nuclear testing program, the Americans dropped the equivalent of nearly two Hiroshima bombs every day for 12 years. One single detonation, Bravo in 1954, was 1,000 times more powerful than Hiroshima. Its fireball could be seen 400 kilometres away, and the radioactive fallout even reached Australia. The fallout was incredible because it took um, three islands and vaporised them and sent them that, that cloud 100,000 feet in the air. When American writer and film producer Jack Needenthal married Regina nearly 30 years ago, he too became a Bikinian as is the Marshallese custom. He says the Bravo blast should never be forgotten. They call it the Day of Two Suns. There were two suns rising that morning, one in the east where it normally is, but then there was a sun in the west. And then it began to snow. And the kids didn't know what this was, so they were out there playing in this stuff. And very soon after that, their hair started to fall out, they started getting radiation sickness, they started to throw up, and of course everybody went into a panic. And those health implications are still being felt now? Those he health implications will probably be felt out here forever. 
my father actually died, and when they opened up the body, every single organ in his body were all cancer. And my father was actually um, was one of those guys that went in 1968 to Bikini to clean the topsoil before they put some houses on it. He was a heavy equipment operator. Is that a common story? Yeah. I, you know, there's so many cancers in this country. Today, only five people live on Bikini Island. Hey, Edward. Hey, Hello. hey everybody. Hello. Welcome to Bikini. Thank you. Edward Madison has a house in what is effectively a ghost town, with its skeleton crew of maintenance staff. You're the only Bikinian in yes. Bikini. bikini. Yes. <laughs> Today, background radiation levels are safe. But unless the Americans pay the estimated billion dollars to totally rehabilitate the islands by removing all the contaminated soil, the Bikinians will remain nuclear nomads. What's your dream? My dream? I hope the United States clean up this one, this island, and make Sure, for the see for the people to come back and live on. The Americans clean up and your family can come home. That's our uh, gift from God. Yes. Are the Americans trying to do the right thing by the locals? No, not anymore. In my mind, they pretty much just wash their hands of the whole thing. This is a piece of American history that they just don't want out there anymore. They, they've always been really embarrassed by this story. If there is any glimmer of hope in this tragic story, it's that nature has bounced back beautifully from the apocalypse. One, two, One, three, two, three four, four, five, five six, seven, eight, eight nine. nine. <laughs> I'm not getting in the water with those. The telltale sign of a healthy marine ecosystem is the presence of sharks. And here at Bikini Atoll's Shark Pass, they are everywhere. Ecotourism could well be the way out of this man-made nightmare, giving Bikini Island's nuclear cloud a silver lining. That's Martin Daly's great hope. We live for a speck of time and, and I'm sure that the, the world ecosystem has gone through terrible changes over the years and um, I'm sure that it'll, it will always bounce back. The irony, of course, because humans were forced to flee, the sea life is replenished. Yeah, um, it's one of, the one of the most protected places on the planet, and that protection is, is, is obvious. So, yeah, it's a special place. It's grabbed me. Yeah. Hello, I'm Alison Langdon. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.